I wanted to do a quick vlog to let you all know that I decided today to put Project 275 Plus on hold for one week. I was gearing up to go out on the hardtail to continue the hardtail versus full suspension video that I'm working on. And I just have felt so tired this morning, so fatigued. And I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit overtrained. Typically, what I do when I start hard training is I'll do three weeks on, one week off. And I haven't really abided by that since I've started these testing. And I've just been so excited about doing these tests. And I think it started with the endurance race that I did, uh, not this past weekend, but the one before. So about nine days ago. Um, I felt good after the race, but I probably should have just completely chilled out for a week. I did two more back-to-back -back days of hard riding later on that week, so I, I probably should have rested then. As a cyclist, it's real important to recognize when you start to get overtrained, because once you go too far, it takes a long time to recover, like weeks to recover from that, and I don't want to do that. Uh, and for me, I know this may sound really crazy, but I feel kind of a weakness and uh, irritability in the back of my shoulders and the back of my arms. And that's how I know I start to get overtrained. Also, my sleep gets a little fidgety and I, I don't sleep as well. And I just feel, you know, just lack of motivation, lack of energy like I've felt all morning. And I know it's because uh, of the training hard. So I decided to, uh, instead of doing my ride today, to just get out on a walk behind my office. So these are the trails right behind my office. They lead into the state park where I do a lot of my testing. So I don't know about you all, but I have to get outside every day. And it's really nice to do it in the middle of the day, break up the work day. And I typically have to be in the woods. It just keeps my sanity from a busy life. I'm really excited about this project. I'm uh, getting a lot of good comments and I'm really excited about the hardtail versus full suspension. It's a really good matchup with those two bikes, the XTC and the Niner or, um, RKT. Same wheels, so it's a very good matchup. I want to know if, if I could be faster. And like I said in the last video that I posted, I'm just really loving the geometry of that XTC and it's got me thinking about putting the one, a 120 fork on the Niner. I don't want to add half a pound of weight, which I think is what the longer fork, because they don't make the step cast in, the, in a 120. I wish Fox did that, but they don't. So I've got to consider that, but I'm loving the geometry with the slacker head angle, and I feel like I can get closer to that by putting a 120 fork. So we'll see. Like I said, I really want to be well rested. I, I want these, these results to be very accurate and to do that I've got to make sure that I feel good before I do the test I don't want to just do it to do it so I've got my anniversary coming up this weekend so my wife and I are gonna get away for a little beach trip for a few days that should really seal the deal on the R&R &R. and I'll be really fresh next weekend one of the nice things about being in Florida I'm not much of a beach person but it is the one place that I can get away and completely let down because there's nothing to do <laughs> but chill out. It's not like going to the mountains where I get so stoked I'm riding hard every day. So I'll completely let down, get some R&R, &R, get back to the testing next week. So thanks for your patience. I know I wanted to ride hard today and tomorrow, but wisdom says to chill out. So that's what I'm going to do. One of the things that I am fascinated with are the books written from the Lance era of cycling where doping was so prevalent. And it's fascinating to me to hear kind of what went on, but also what some of these guys were thinking when they made the decision to dope. And, you know, one of the things they would talk about is the recovery time. I think it was Tyler Hamilton who was saying that after one ride he was just completely spent and was given I think it was a testosterone pill a little red egg I think he called it 
and the next day he was just completely recovered so when you get into these overtraining situations it gives you a little bit of a glimpse into the temptation these guys were faced with and I have never doped and I never ever will but you gotta you gotta wonder kind of what goes through those guys heads when they <laughs> made that decision I don't know why I went off on that tangent but I was thinking about that this morning because <laughs> you know you got you have a lot of respect for those guys who would ride the tour completely clean the one or two that did back then <laughs> probably literally one or two I don't know but you know it gives you respect because to be able to push your body for 23 days man when you get when you get a little fatigue like this it gives you some respect so anyway I'll end this little vlog here Thanks for watching, and again, thanks again for your patience, and um, we'll pick it up next week. I'll still probably put out a video or two in the next few days. It just won't be related to Project 275 Plus. And it'll be about six or seven days, and I'll get back on it. I'll be refreshed. Thanks for watching. So almost back at my office, and there's a really cool snake. I think I know what kind of snake this is, but I'm not going to say because I don't know them very well. And I don't want to be embarrassed. You know, I'm going to try to set the GoPro next to him and see if he'll go up to it. That'd be really awesome. There he is. Hey, buddy. I don't think that one's poisonous. Can you see him? I've got it zoomed in. I'm going to uh, do a National Geographic scene for him. Big stick. All right, that should be big enough. Right, move along. Go on. Move along. Come on, go off the trail. Go! I gotta get my camera back, dude. Oh, that's a rattlesnake. Oh, he's rattling. Nice. Right, move off the trail. Come on. I gotta get my camera back. There you go. See, I don't think that's a rattlesnake. Does it definitely doesn't have the markings of a rattlesnake, but he shook his tail like a rattlesnake. Well, that was kind of cool. So, uh, right about this spot, like 20 feet past this, I was on a ride. I think it was a Sunday afternoon, and um, came across a coral snake, big coral snake, and got some pictures of him. So, yeah, seen a lot of snakes this spring. I guess it's the mating season for snakes. Anyway, signing off. All right, so I'm back at my desk, and I think that was a yellow rat snake, but I've never seen them shake their tail like that. So all of you biologists out there, let me know what kind of snake you think that was. Anyway, that's it. See you in the next one.